let's do some theological math, shall we? You say, what exactly is that? I don't recall taking that subject in high school. And that is unfortunate because when we do theological math, we will understand why the world, why your life, why your circumstances are what they are. Uh, let us jump into a little something that I call the two, two, two prince. Pal is for the guy at school. Prince, uh, Paul. Mm. What exactly is the 2-2 principle? It is a way to understand what God is doing in the world so that when something happens to you, you understand this isn't happening to me at all. I'm in Christ. This happens for me. Uh, what are the 2 2 twos? Well, all of these numbers fall underneath this little umbrella. It's like the travelers, sort of like the insurance company right there. This is God's running of the universe, in control of every single detail. We call it the doctrine of sovereignty, where God is seeing in the future, a little something we call provid providence. I should know that, that's the name of my church. The point is, God is sovereignly running the universe by knowing every single detail and making everything work out for your good and for his glory. Uh, you say, wait a second, are those two of the numbers? No, this is the umbrella. Underneath this umbrella of sovereignty, you've got two types of people. You've got those who are in Christ and you have got those who are out of Christ. In other words, the only division on our planet are those who are believers in the only true and living God and those who are not. That is one of our twos. But we also need to understand another two. How does God deal with these people? How is he coordinating all of this? How does all of this ordinance and ordaining stuff and providence all work? Well, there are two ways that God deals with two types of people. God either causes stuff to happen or he permits stuff to happen. What's the difference? It's a huge difference. God causes all things to work for our good. That means good and bad, but he doesn't get credit for the evil in the world. Instead, we do. Why? Because he permits us to sin and do evil things. But having said that, he causes things to happen and he permits evil things to happen. It all falls underneath this umbrella of sovereignty and providence. That means, and this is <clears throat> kind of a big pill to swallow. Even the evil things in the world, we can say God is not responsible for the evil, but he has seen it in the future providentially knowing what's going to happen, and he lets it happen for our good, if we're in Christ, and for his glory. Gulp, because right now you're thinking, oh, some really hard things have happened in my life. I, I understand that. And I'm not trying to downplay a, a tragedy that has happened to you and the effect and the impact. This is not to minimize a difficult thing in your life. It is to simply help us to get it, understand it, and grow from it. God runs the world two ways. God is dealing with two types of people, and God is doing two things for those people. What are those two things? Well, let's tackle this guy, shall we? The individual who is out of Christ. One of the things that God could be doing if something hard is happening to that person, he could be, Romans 1, even now, pouring out his wrath. He doesn't have to wait until he sends this person to hell. 
he might be punishing this person temporally. But that's just one reason. There's another reason that God either permits or causes hard things to happen for the unbeliever. And we see Jesus explain this. Do you remember in Luke 13, Jesus raised the question. It wasn't the breaking Fox News alert. Jesus brought up the subject of some people who died when the Tower of Siloam fell on them. And then he talked about these people who were massacred at the temple and that they were slain while offering a sacrifice. What do we do with that theologically? Jesus' response appears to be cold, but I'm telling you, it's loving. Uh, unless you repent, you likewise will perish. In other words, tragedies, difficult things, God uses to get people saved. But you're not out of Christ. You're in Christ. So what you're really interested in is what are the two things that God is doing for us? Because remember, God never does anything to his children. He only does good things for us that glorify him. Uh, here is the first thing. God could be preparing you. You're going to meet somebody down the road who's going through the same thing that you're going through, and you will be able to comfort them with the same comfort that you have been shown as you go through your tragedy. That's one reason there is a second reason, and this is the biggie, and this is the perhaps most difficult part. God is growing us. That's his desire. He uses whatever it is, causing or permitting, to grow us, to change us, to fix us, to make us better, to make us more like him, so that we appear more and more like his son, Jesus Christ. That is theological math.